Uh, hello everyone, I'm Glenn. Probably many of you know the game Among Us. So I played a little bit and stuck a little bit to the point that I wanted to play it in life. You know, how strange it was in general and how scared my relatives and friends were. I slowly and surely confused reality, so I almost lost myself. If you don't know about this game yet, I can tell you briefly about it. In short, this is for fans of easy and simple to play. Personally, I was lured by the game theme of space. There is an obscenely simple design, graphics, and everything so clear and beautiful. This game has its own spaceship with astronauts, among which there are also evil characters. Fake. So there is a struggle between good and evil, in which everyone wants to win. Enemies are not so easy to identify, you just need to be careful. At the same time, you need to perform light tasks. They served as an anti-stress type for me. It really relaxed me, especially after a hard day of school. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the game is purely online, and people there can play strangers. So figs, guess who is who? Well, if you look closely, only then. So once I tried to play a game, and at the same time participate in a challenge. There you had to play without lights. It was quite difficult and exciting. As soon as we started playing, we found a dead body. This led to such a dead end. How now to guess where the maniac is? In parallel, I was completing tasks, and my brain was exploding, and I thought, who can be an imposter? Like many of my team, we made the decision not to expel anyone. I wandered towards the reactor, and I kept thinking that I was going to be killed. But for a while, I lived like this. You know, playing in the dark is really creepy. I offered my options about who might be an imposter, but there was little support for me. I, by the way, was also nominated, but in the end we chose a person, and everyone voted for him, and he turned out to be an ordinary astronaut. In short, the game was hot. I did not understand how much time I sit on the internet and think and think. That day was the night I was playing. I have to go to school in the morning, and I'm so stuck that I barely slept. In short, I passed out somewhere in the morning. Maybe it was already 5 hours. Just so you know, I should be up by 6.30. In general, I was like a zombie, quickly dressed, washed, and went to school. I spent some time in class. I don't remember exactly how I wrote down the tasks. I came home and promised myself to go to bed early and got stuck in the game again. Here we are again with the guys in the same team. I am an ordinary astronaut, looking for a maniac, but I do not find it. We lost 10 times in a row. It was starting to make me angry. Unbeknownst to me, when the battery on my phone had already run out, I saw that it was dawn outside the window. Damn it, morning again. I was angry and tired, but there was nothing I could do. So I changed my clothes, washed, ate, and went to school. On the second day without sleep, my eyes turned red like my spacesuit in the game. I didn't really understand what was happening and did some things on the machine. For example, opening a notebook. I fell asleep at recess, in class, at lunch. My friends would wake me up, but I couldn't wake up. As soon as I got home, I was stuck in the game again. Gradually, reality and the game got mixed up in my head, and I began to look at my friends through the prism of the game. You'll find it funny at first, until I'm not peekaboo at all. Well, listen to what happened next. I remember opening my eyes when I was sitting at my desk. Math class was in progress. The teacher called me to the blackboard, I went out, solved the problems as in a game, sat down and stared at the children. I even began to suspect the teacher, it seemed to me that she might be a maniac. It's not something that she said something about my academic performance, I think she just wanted to extinguish me, set me up so that everyone would think that I was a maniac. But no, this is not going to happen. I got up from my seat, went to her, and told the class that she was an imposter. Vote, I shouted. The guys looked at me like I was crazy. I didn't understand why they were all silent. I started calling everyone by their first names. And then Scarlet was like, are you alright? And then I realized that she was in on it. I told the guys that now, if they all boil, in a second we will have two more corpses. But the teacher suddenly got up and started yelling at me. Like, what am I talking about? What other two corpses? She took me by the hand and led me to the staff room to meet with the principal. I resisted as much as I could. On the way, I shouted that she was a maniac and that now the guys would quickly defeat her. She was literally dragging me down the hall, and I was yelling that someone was going to die. I was locked in an office. I tried to get to the reactor there, shouted to be given tasks. I am ready to complete them. I don't know how long it's been since I was locked up, but I'm sweating, tired, and hungry. Then the door opened and I was ready, and my mother came in. I asked, do you play too? My mother did not answer me. 
She only began to cry violently, and her tears seemed to awaken me. I suddenly woke up, looked around, and realized that I was at school. I saw that I was surrounded by teachers, the principal, and my mother was standing next to me, crying. Then the nurse came running and I felt so tired. I wanted to sit down. I sat down on the floor and told my mother that I wanted to go home and eat and sleep. They took me to the hospital and checked me out. The psychologist said that I just played too much and asked my parents to control my playing time more. I came to my senses only a day later. I slept stupidly in the hospital. I slept off. I was watched. I had a great depleted body during these days and I could even die. And not in the game, but for real. In short guys, what I want to say. Games, such a thing, very easily can master you and then do not let go for a long time. So if you are still gamers, then at least eat and sleep. Otherwise, everything will end up like mine. Also, don't forget to tell me in the comments what are your favorite games and how many hours in a row you played it. Write your opinion about my story, share it with your friends, do not spare likes, and subscribe to the channel. I'll tell you a secret. I've never been able to make friends and meet girls. It seemed to me that this mission was impossible. But one day, I found a way out. Somewhere in my mind, my brain thought, it's not working in this reality, then let's create our own. And my life changed after that. For example, I was never very sociable, and I didn't look attractive to girls. I was uncomfortable in public places. I didn't like it when my parents or younger sisters came into my room. I valued respect for the boundaries of personal space and demanded the same from others. But at some critical moment, everything changed. By the way, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Dilton, and I'm 17, and I'm in school. I have a family, as I said, parents and sisters. My mother always said I was special, so I think she was trying to disguise my desire for self-isolation. From an early age, I loved being alone, eating dinner, walking, playing with toys. Once my father gave me a diary for my birthday and advised me to keep notes on my mood. This is for emotional relief. Since then, this activity has become one of my favorites, until this year. On my 17th birthday, my parents gave me a smartphone. It is very awesome and expensive. Although we did not live richly, my father and mother still paid out. This was my father's wish. I know they feel responsible for the fact that I am not like everyone else, and they try to please me in every possible way. I appreciate it, even if I don't say it out loud. Naturally, it was an insanely cool gift, and the first thing I did was run into the room and try out the gadget. In Google, I found out a lot of information about the functions and capabilities of the device, and also came across a curious program. It was gaining popularity on the network. It was called Life, in the translation of Life. It looks like a normal app. You register, create a character to your liking, the main character of the app, and perform the proposed tasks. For each successfully completed, you get points. The more, the better. So I created an improved version of myself, without dark circles under my eyes, with a toned body, taller, with a perfect smile, in a word, a handsome man who was respected and loved by everyone around me. The first thing the game offered me was to meet someone and make friends. I had to learn to conduct a dialogue, like in real life. But I didn't even know how to do it, and my palms were sweating all the time from nerves. It was very realistic or so it seemed to me. Then I saw our school in the game, and a few older boys came up to me at lunch and sat down with me to eat. This attracted the attention of my classmates. I surprised myself, but they asked me something on the devices, what I was good at. So the conversation started smoothly, and then they invited me to meet them after school so I could help them choose a set-top box. It was the best moment of my life, we had a great time and got to know each other better. They were very different, different from me in their confidence and freedom. I knew that living in the shadows made me uncomfortable for me alone. In the evening, they patted me on the shoulder, thanked me, and told me that we should definitely go camping together. I got home late. My mother waited anxiously at the door. When she saw me, she asked me where I was and why I didn't answer the phone. I told her everything. Her expression changed. She smiled and said no more. The next morning, I packed up my things as quickly as ever. 
had a bite to eat, and ran to school. There I saw those guys again. They said hello to me, and I went to class. My classmate Jim sat next to me and asked me what I was doing to attract the attention of high school students. You won't believe it, but within a week, I had my own company. I started to get involved in even new hobbies. I met those guys. We went to the promised camping. We spent time with my new friends. Parents watched the positive changes and were happy. My father said he always believed in me. About a couple months later, the school holidays came. Summer is a great time. My friends and I made a lot of plans. We found a temporary part-time job and used the money to go to Disneyland. And when I got home, I wanted to enroll in SMM and IT courses. I wanted to link my future to it. In general, life has changed, and all you had to do was change yourself. I wish I hadn't realized that until I was 17. Finally, after a month of hard work, we packed up and moved to California. Harry, our friend's older sister, went with us to accompany us. When we set foot in the land of entertainment, we could not believe our eyes. Disneyland was so close. Our company spent three crazy days there. We rode, ate everything harmful, took a lot of photos, walked in the evenings. I was happy. I couldn't have been better. Just when I thought about it, Chris came up to me. This is the name of a random passerby. We met in the queue for the ride. She came here with her parents for a vacation. We immediately found a common language. I hated to leave her, but we had to leave. Chris left me her social address and phone number. I really liked her. I drove home full of happiness. Happiness, what is a nice word and why did I set myself so many boundaries before, I asked myself. All summer passed in a crazy rhythm. I was able to help my dad in the garage, my mom in the kitchen, and be with friends. And in the evening, we talked with Chris on Skype. I promised her that I would definitely come to California next year. And then one morning, when I woke up, I felt tired in my body. I was broken. I was cold. I can't be sick, I thought. I got out of bed and went to the bathroom, brushed my teeth, washed my face, and looked at myself in the mirror. What? Those dark circles under your eyes again. My emaciated body. Where's my fancy hair? Ah, I shouted. My mother exclaimed anxiously, Honey, are you all right? Open the door. I stood dumbfounded for a few more minutes. My mother was knocking on the door, and when I opened it, she hugged me tightly and asked me why I was screaming. I didn't know what was going on. Mom, I think something has happened. I need to call Jim or Chris, or better yet both. Today is an important exam at school. The guys from the senior class asked them to help with something. I have so much to do, and I'm kind of sick. Give me some medicine or tea or maybe some chicken broth, like you usually do. Huh, Mom? Mom? I babbled, and my mom stood with her hands over her mouth and cried. She looked at me and cried again. I didn't know what was going on. Son, Jim and Chris don't exist, she said softly. What? Mom, what a load of nonsense. Of course they are. We've been talking for months. I introduced Jim to you. Showed you a picture of Chris from Disneyland. Don't you remember? I asked. And I felt myself getting angry. My mother cried even more and said that I didn't go anywhere, that my friends and girls didn't exist, that I didn't work anywhere, that it was all an illusion, or rather a game that I played from morning to night, that I created an ideal life for myself there and got involved to the point where I confused the game with reality. As proof, my mother showed me this game, and I only noticed it today because my mother managed to take my phone out of my hands before I woke up. I'm sorry, son. My dad and I shouldn't have given you this phone. It took over your life. I'm sorry, was all she said. In general, I returned to my boring, gray, monotonous life. My dad sold my smartphone, and I kept coming back to reality. Sorry. And I love that life so much. But since then, I actually began to help my father in the garage and my mother in the kitchen, learned how to fix cars and cook food. And you know what? I decided not to lose heart and try to build my life, not as in the game, but even better. I realized that I can manage my life on my own.